Hi, I'm Wade Kravita from Custom Fire, and behind me is a new urban interface pumper which we just completed for the city of Brainerd, Minnesota. This truck is built on a four-door Freightliner M2 chassis, features a stainless steel rescue style pumper body, it contains a Watrous two-stage 1500 GPM fire pump and a 300 GPM Watrous uh, auxiliary PTO driven fire pump. As you'll see, the front bumper contains a remote mounted bumper turret and under these cab steps we have booster reels on each side of the truck. They're excited to take delivery of this truck. When they received their first truck from Custom Fire in 2016, their very first fire call they received 21 inches of snow. They actually had a county plow truck come in and make a path to the structure. So building on that sort of memory and looking into the future, they thought it was important that their next apparatus has all-wheel drive. The intention of the design of this truck was to mimic their two previous pumpers. Both of them are midship fire pumps with speed lays stacked ahead of the fire pump, but they are both built on cab over custom chassis. So we had to do a little bit of design massaging to make that design work on a four-door, four-wheel drive Freightliner. And then added into the mix is this 300 GPM PTO fire pump. The overall dimensions are quite reasonable. This truck is 31 foot 7 inches long, it's 10 foot 4 inches tall, and it weighs 36,000 pounds with the 1,000 gallons of water on board. The engineers at Custom Fire have done a wonderful job of packaging on this truck, and they've put in some awesome details and just real fit and finish items that we're known for. You can see here that we have a flush fit laser cut uh, hinge door which gives access to the def and fuel. We use our laser to do common line cutting so that the tread pattern is maintained throughout the assembly. We have a removable panel here to give access to the batteries which can be removed once you also remove this panel from the cab. And last but not least we have an access door for the booster reel. Again, flush fit, common line cutting just like the other uh, panels on the step assembly. And I point those things out and they might seem minor to you, but to us at Custom Fire, we're all about fit and finish, attention to detail, and we have invested in the best tools and talent available to achieve that mission. Under here we have 150 feet of one inch booster hose with a TFT pistol grip nozzle, and then we have a fair lead built into that opening as well. So each side of this truck features a booster reel, and each reel is controlled by its respective panel down below here. We have an air operated valve switch to open the valve, pressure gauge, a rewind button, and very importantly in our climate is a quarter turn valve to blow air through the reel to evacuate the water to prevent freeze up. Now as you look at this truck you're going to notice a few bits of tape and a few loose items. That's because the customer just walked around and told us where they want the final mountings to take place. So we're going to do that here shortly. But in the meantime, I'll just tell you about this pump panel. As I mentioned, it's a Watrous CMU 1500 fire pump. That's a two-stage fire pump. The customer has the two-stage fire pump on their other apparatus, and they've really grown to love the versatility of that style of pump. Also contained inside here is that 300 GPM auxiliary fire pump, which offers pump and roll performance for the reels and the bumper turret. We have three poly pullout speed lays ahead of the fire pump. Each one carries 200 feet of hose, inch and three quarter on these two, and two and a half up above. We have compound gauges, 50-50 style gauge, which gives a much broader uh, range for the vacuum. And then, of course, the, the uh, pump boss also features the NFPA compliant uh, compound readouts as well. The discharge valves are primarily manual push-pull controls. We do have an electric for a master stream. And then the uh, rear intake is electric operated. The driver's side intake is hand wheel operated. And then the officer side intake is air operated. It sounds like a complicated way to control all those intakes, but they've trained, they're used to it, and frankly, they have it on their other apparatus. So we're looking for uniformity. Over here, a common feature now on trucks is the Trident Air Primer. It's, people call it the Auto Primer. What it really is is it has an auto mode which will sense a pressure drop. It'll activate the primer as needed and shut it off when prime is reestablished. 
that's really important in cases when you're changing water source or possibly creating a, a swirl or cavitation at your uh, your low level strainer during relay op or uh, drafting operations. We have this panel bump out here. It's kind of a false wall, but it contains electrical harnesses, but it also, more importantly, allowed a recess mount of their radio, a switch bank here for the various lights on the truck, and then we also have an intercom jack. Talking about packaging on this truck, we have the wheel chocks located right here in an easy to access manner. Keeps them free of road grime, snow, and whatever. And in the back portion, we have storage for three air bottles. Up above, we have an adjustable shelf with dividers. Those dividers are positioned for the use of their medic bag, a cooler, and a few other things that they have on, on their fleet. In the rear compartment here on the driver's side, we have two pull-out tool boards, a divider, and a couple shelves. The tool boards were notched to follow the con compartment. It's shallow up above, obviously, and deep down below and we mounted the track lower so that we can get it all the way out of the compartment. As I may have mentioned earlier, this is a stainless steel body, so it carries our most extensive warranty. The subframe, the tank cradle is also 304 stainless with a lifetime warranty matching the lifetime warranty of the tank. The wiring on our trucks is all contained within the body. We don't have any wiring outside of the body short of the uh, you know rub rail lights and underbody lights but all the wiring starts in the uh, front of the body and travels to the rear and has dropouts throughout. The wiring is all printed with the function, color coded, and we have a return ground wire on every light, so we're not grounding anything on the body itself. Now the warning lights are also attached via a, a Deutsch connector. If I were to unscrew this light right here, I'd pull it out and there'd be a, like a triangular shaped weatherproof Deutsch connector. So the service, maintenance, accessibility, and frankly just the reliability and durability of our products is top notch. Now with everything buttoned up on the rear of the truck, it's a very clean design. Everything's contained and protected from the elements. You'll notice that the tailboard is a bit higher. It's like six inches higher than normal because we did the improved departure angle on the rear of the truck. We have a poly overlay on the rear tailboard and then poly rub rails to kind of carry that aesthetic through the, the design of the truck. Now with everything open, you'll see that we have our swing out drop down ladder giving excellent access to the hose bed of the truck. And then we have a variety of Wayland lights, the M9s up above with the Pioneer scene lights and then down below uh, M9 warnings and M6 uh, stop tail turn lights. Within the rear compartment of the truck, we have a 10 foot hard hose pre-attached to a strainer. So that's excellent to, to just yank out of there and hook it to the rear intake for drafting. We have a two and a half inch direct tank fill and a two and a half inch rear discharge. And then alongside the tank and inboard of the compartments, we have slide in storage of a 24 foot, 14 foot, 10 foot attic, and then a couple pike poles. The hose bed on this truck exceeds what NFPA requires for hose load. And you'll see an adjustable divider there and also some nice LED flush uh, lights on the sidewalls of the hose bed. So I touch on the topic of packaging a lot when we do these walk-arounds here on these trucks. And what I mean by that is how did we, how were we thoughtful about the placement of equipment and gear and the overall size, form, fit, and function of the apparatus? This truck is indicative of that. We have shallow upper compartments and deep lower compartments. Shallow compartments obviously allowing the slide-in ladders out, outboard of the tank and then just frankly tank capacity because this does carry a thousand gallons in a fairly compact uh, body. We're on the right side of the truck here and I'll just point out some details. We have pull down straps for each roll up door, adjustable shelves in the, the two rear compartments, a pull out tray in the rear compartment, and then within each compartment we also have shore power plug-ins. Now we're going to be mounting a few more power strips and uh, some wrenches and whatnot so we've marked that to do later today. Behind the pump panel you can see where we notched the compartment for the storage of some extinguishers. The pump panel here is, you know, it's integrated into the body of the truck but it's similar to our other midship pumps in the sense that we have a large removable panel for the primary components of the pump system. Up above we have ladders sliding into that pump area but there's a flip up access door to uh, inspect and do some service. 
and then it's just bumped out up above where we have like the onboard compressor and battery charger. Oftentimes what dictates the overall length of the truck is going to be the bumper, the cab length, uh, in some cases the pump module, but then certainly the ladders. So the shortest truck is achieved by, you know, the shortest bumper, the shortest cab length, and then the shortest ladders. And in that regard, we have the 14 foot roof ladder coming right up to this point over the fire pump. You know, it just requires forethought as you're plumbing the truck to be able to do that. But we do have, an, you know, a couple discharges and intake. And then this is a little trap door for the transfer valve override should the electric motor fail. And again, under the officer side cab step, we have another booster rail, 150 feet of one inch. There's never ending debate over the use of a commercial chassis in the fire service versus a custom chassis in the fire service. In this case, the commercial chassis proved to be the more appropriate fit. It offers a reasonable uh, four wheel drive system, a reasonable ride height, and certainly a reasonable price compared to a custom chassis alternative. That said, you know, the wheelbase is about three feet longer because of their choice of a four-door commercial chassis. So that's gonna impact the maneuverability. But overall, the truck is fairly short. Freightliner does an excellent job on their own making trucks ready for fire service. They provide the vehicle data recorder. They provide electronic stability control. Of course, they provide the EVS Allison transmission. But they'll also do things like hood-mounted air horns, with controls in the cab, and they'll even cut out speaker openings in the grill for an electric siren. We've done a couple things of our own under the uh, front fender of this truck, one of them being the quarter turn valves, which isolates the coolant from the pump heater. And also importantly for trucks in this type of climate with very cold weather, we have a sealed up and heated pump compartment, but the heater's only as good as the hot coolant that gets to it. So we put a 12 volt boost pump on the coolant uh, lines to speed up that coolant so it stays hot as it reaches the pump heater. So the front end of this truck is really good looking. I mean, we have this great custom made front bumper here, kind of a severe duty style. We have a recessed Q siren, a laser cut speaker grill on the other side, and then front and center literally is the remote uh, bumper turret. In this case, it's an Akron Firefox so they have a joystick and controls in the cab to uh, open the valve and just control the position up and down, left and right. These are becoming very popular on tankers, quick attacks, and even you know structural fire pumpers. You can pull up to a car uh, car fire and and you know make an initial attack that way. But I'm seeing a lot more uh, interest in these types of devices. I touched on the topic of commercial and custom chassis. You know, the commercial chassis, it fills a need, fills a niche, and we've done a pretty excellent job of making it work in the fire service. We have a nice large console here with really well laid out controls, uh, radio head, auxiliary fire pump, electric siren. We have a pressure gauge, a tank level gauge, and then controls for that bumper turret. Behind the console, we have the firecom control for the headset system, and then we also have a couple map pockets. Up above, we have some rocker switches for the scene lights and warning lights. And then on the dash, it's fairly factory original, but we did integrate some pump controls on that as well. This cab is equipped for a crew of five. We have an air pack seat for the officer, and then three air pack seats in the rear for the crew. And then everyone has a Firecom headset. We hope you've enjoyed this walk around of this new interface pumper for Brainerd, Minnesota, and we appreciate the time you put into watching these reviews. We're very thankful to the city of Brainerd for their patronage over the past several years, and we'd love to work with you. So if you're in the market for a new interface pumper or just a structural pumper, mini pumper, rescue, quick attack, or tender, please look us up. I'm Wade Kervita from Custom Fire. Thanks for watching. The overall design of this truck, okay. On the officer side of, on the officer, uh, I hate that word. You know, screw in and not, br not break the screw. I don't need to talk about that. I just need to start over. I think I'm talking to that camera and that one's looking at me. Blah, blah, blah. Scratch what I just said. I mean, maybe you can find something useful out of all that.